Hello, welcome to my tech fan. My name is Igor and I got so many requests to test two cement filaments. And finally, here they are, PLA, PTG, ASA and uh, PC blend. And uh, maybe uh, you will notice that one important filament is missing here and that's the carbon fiber reinforced PC blend. Now, uh, probably I will compare it directly with the PC blend in the separate video. Uh, if you are new on this channel, you should know that uh, I have this now my standard test objects and uh, test, testing method. And this means that the results are comparable not only with these filaments in this video, but also with those which I did in earlier videos or I will do in the future videos. Now, I believe it is important to mention that uh, I tried to contact Plus Cement or Plusa for more than a month now, weekly on different channels, uh, if they want to send me some sample filaments and if they want to be reviewed on my channel. And not even once I didn't got any kind of replay. Uh, you will find actually uh, Plus Cement or Plusa products uh, sent to only to very popular YouTubers. Uh, I understand that they don't want to be reviewed on small channel like mine, but uh, this is extremely ugly behavior to don't get any kind of replay. I mean, I accept uh, negative answers too, and this is extremely rare that I contact some company and they don't give me any kind of answer. Anyway, uh, I have kind donations and as I mentioned, all donations I got on this channel I am spending to materials and equipment and that's why uh, I have these uh, reviews. All these filaments I bought by me, as you can see these three are completely new uh, and they will be unboxed in this video. Uh, the PLA I bought uh, maybe a year ago and uh, I use it for one video and since that it is in a resealable bag. So uh, I will use this one for the PLA. About printability, uh, PLA, it requires lowest printing temperatures, uh, nozzle approximately 210 degrees Celsius, uh, bed to 60 degrees Celsius. It is not so sensitive to moisture. Actually, it is quite strong filament, you will see in, in my mechanical tests. The biggest problem with it is that the uh, heated fraction temperature is approximately 50 degrees Celsius. This means if you, if you forget your printed part inside a car on a hot summer day, probably it will deform. PTG, it is the second easiest material for CD printing. The mechanical properties compared to the PLA, well, uh, depend, you will see in mechanical tests, sometimes it is a, even a little bit weaker, but less brittle material. But more important is that uh, its heat deflecting temperature is at approximately 20 degrees Celsius higher compared to the PLA. Uh, one thing you have to pay attention that it is more sensitive to moisture, but not so sensitive like nylon. So uh, usually what I do with the PTG that I uh, take it out uh, from the box and the uh, uh, packaging bag, I do a printing on open printer. And immediately after the printing, I put it in some receivable bag with some desiccant inside and I store it like that. So I don't have to use the filament dryer. In case you have some very old uh, PETG filament, uh, any old cheap filament dryer will do the job because it doesn't require so high temperatures for the drying compared to the nylon. ASA and uh, PC blend. From printing aspect, they are quite similar filaments, so they, they require high temperatures and they're not so sensitive to moisture, interesting, not even PC blend, but it is recommended to print inside the enclosure. Since everything I will print on my Plus MRC S, uh, I build the IKEA LEC enclosure, which is designed by Plus actually. Um, now uh, Plus have their dedicated uh, enclosure, but it is very expensive. So uh, 360 dollars, I think. Uh, that's too expensive, so I'm not buying that thing. Uh, if you don't want to mess with DIY enclosure, like with this IKEA LEC enclosure. You can buy a Creality enclosure, uh, which is approximately 50 or 60 dollars, and it is flame retendant and not so aesthetic like this uh, Plus version. It is good to compare these uh, to measure the temperatures, or is it worth the uh, extra uh, cost? But uh, for this, I need more than a half year of donation, so definitely I am not buying that uh, uh, Plus new enclosure. PC blend always arises with this glue stick. Uh, for better bed adhesion as a, uh, and as a separation agent. Now I always start with the temperature tower and then I decide on which temperature I want to print those test specimens. But basically since I will use the Prussia slicer and uh, it has uh, a profile, pressure profiles for all these filaments, I will just do what uh, most user will do, just do the correct profile and I will print all the specimens uh, for that. Of course, I will print the temperature tower, but mostly I'm curious about the bed adhesion, especially with ASA and PC blend. 
Um, properly, I will use or satin or textured uh, PI sheet. I forgot to mention, if you think this video is too long, don't forget you have always contents down in the description and you can jump to the, any part of the video, maybe directly to the results, or you can download those results uh, in Excel table, link is down in the description, and I'm preparing a special gift for my Patreon supporters, but more about that in the conclusions. Let's start with PLA. I'm starting with PLA, as you can see it is in yellow color, but previously I printed with some black, so maybe first few layers will be a little bit darker. And I'm starting with first element on uh, 225 degrees Celsius. It's printing the last element on 205 degrees Celsius. And uh, this is not the first time I'm using this filament and I know it is okay. So this temperature tower looks great so far. Printing is finished and quick check of the bed adhesion, which is great on this smooth PI sheet. Temperature tower looks great on all three temperatures and I will print everything on 215 degrees Celsius because this is the preset value in Prusa Slicer. And um, I will take a closer look, I will compare all four temperature towers when uh, I will finish the printing before the mechanical testing. I will print all test objects at once and this is fourth layer and everything is okay so far, but this will be almost four hours printing. Looks okay so far, and uh, one and a half hours more, but uh, I hope I will not get an unpleasant surprise in the morning. And it's finished. Let's move to PETG, and this is a new box, so I will do some kind of unboxing too. It has nice vacuum packaging and spool is very similar, but I can see it is cardboard inside. And this is also a resealable bag, so I have to cut it here. And there is a silica gel inside the spool. This is what I like with the plus cement. Look how nice it is rolled on the spool. I'm starting with temperature tower on 260 degrees Celsius and as you can see I'm using textured PEI sheet. Be careful if you are using smooth PEI sheet because the PETG may stick too good to it. Uh, so in that case uh, you should use some kind of separation agent like glue stick or similar. And I'm not using the dry box or any filament dryer. I am printing on the open printer and immediately after the printing uh, I will place it back into the resealable bag with some silica gel inside. It's finishing the second element on 250 degrees Celsius and only on 260 I can see very minimal stringing. On 250 it is completely clean. You know, stringing is the first sign that uh, it may have to be dried or something like that. But in this case it is almost completely dry. Temperature tower is finished and I know that the adhesion is great with this uh, texture PI sheet. I have to wait until it cools down and then I can remove it. As you can see, almost no stringing at all, very minimal on 260 degrees Celsius. The overhang is perfect and the bridging. And I can print all test specimens and they will be printed on 250 degrees Celsius, which is the default inside the Prusa Slicer. This is the third layer and looks okay so far. And this will be almost four hours of printing again, but I want to print all test specimens at once. And I hope I will don't get any unpleasant surprise in the morning. Good morning, printing is finished, the bed is cooled down and it's very, very easy to remove now these objects. And PETG I like to place in some vacuum bag and I will suck the air and it will keep it from the moisture. It's time to open the ASA box. No big difference here. This is Galaxy Black and it is also packed in this resealable bag.
there is a silk gel inside, so after the printing it goes back to this bag. And also very nice rolling on the spool. So ASA and PC brand will be printed inside this uh, enclosure. This is IKEA lac enclosure designed by Prusa. It's not completely finished yet, but uh, it will do the job. If you're not familiar with the printing inside the enclosure, you don't need too high temperature inside. Maybe 40, 45, 50 degrees is far enough. Uh, but what is important that th uh, when you start with the printing, don't open it to prevent any kind of the breeze or movement of the air near the CD printed object. is the second element of the temperature tower on 260 degrees Celsius and it will have one more on 250 degrees Celsius and this is stock uh, Prusa Mars 3S only I moved the screen and the power supply unit outside because this is passive uh, power supply unit it doesn't have any fan and uh, it will have a longer lifespan because it doesn't like uh, temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius current inside the enclosure is 45 degrees Celsius the screen I moved outside from two reasons I have a little bit more space here and the second reason is that I can manipulate the settings without opening the door. Uh, one more thing I did actually here, and that's the mounting the fan, because this uh, main body is also passive, it doesn't have any fan, and uh, I just worry about those stepper motor drivers. Now actually the stepper motor drivers are from the other side, but here I don't really have a space for the fan, uh, so it would be better if this main board would be in opposite direction. But anyway, I hope it will help a little bit. And also I want to mention that I'm using here this uh, Prusa Satin PI sheet without any ad additional material on it. And uh, it sticks very good and it's perfectly flat. And yes, and I want to mention that about this spool holder, it's rotating a little bit hard and probably I will redesign it. I will add some kind of ball bearings here and I want to have a little bit smoother motion. I just captured the bridging moment, which is our problem with the ASA ABS without any cooling. But it looks good. Printing is finished. Uh, the temperature went up to 46 degrees Celsius inside, and the bed adhesion is great. I will wait until it cools down, and probably it will be very easy to remove the object. Okay, so the bed cooled down to 40 degrees Celsius, and let's see. Oh, it's, it's completely removed. And looks like uh, we have another almost perfect uh, temperature tower. Don't be confused, this is 270 degrees Celsius, only looks like the guys already didn't predict that everybody will print above 260 degrees Celsius. So they didn't prepare that element. Great overhang even on 60 degrees, uh, <laughs> interesting, perfect bridging and of course uh, absolutely no stringing. Okay, I think it's time to print test specimens on 260 degrees Celsius. So after one and a half hours you can see the progress and it will be maybe three hours more printing and uh, after one and a half hours the temperature stabilized around uh, 48 degrees Celsius inside and there is the sensor in this position. Those two objects for the layer adhesion test are the last one and printing will be finished in approximately 12 minutes and temperature inside the enclosure was uh, 47 degrees Celsius constantly. Printing is finished and uh, I can see some warping on some uh, on the brim at least and I want to check the bed adhesion which is good. Well, it could be better a little bit so definitely next time I will use a glue stick. And now it's time to move to the PC blend as you can see it is in orange color. Packaging is the same like with the previous spools, uh, which is cardboard inside and it is in this vacuum packaging where we have this ceiling line. Silica gel inside. And again it is rolled very nice on this spool. The temperature tower will be from 285 to 265. But unfortunately uh, on temperature towers I don't have uh, 285 uh, elements, only 185 but the temperature will be, of course, a uh, bigger one. 
Now PC Blend arrives with this uh, glue stick uh, which is used as a separation agent if you are using a smooth or textured PI sheet and according to the uh, data sheet on their website uh, with the satin sheet we don't have to use this uh, separation agent. So the temperature tower I will try to print on, uh, on this uh, satin sheet but uh, probably the test specimens I will print on this textured sheet using the glue stick. First layer goes down perfectly and I hope it will stay like this because uh, this material may warp. Ok, definitely moving to the texture PI sheet with the glue stick. Cleaning with isopropyl alcohol and applying some PVA based glue stick. The start is always perfect, but we will see in a few minutes, will it stay like that? It looks like this texture sheet and the glue stick did the magic, because it's already better than my previous attempt. And this is the first element still on 285 degrees Celsius. This is the last element of temperature tower on 265 degrees Celsius. And I now I notice that I forget to enable the brim, so definitely using a brim is recommended and I will use it with the test specimens because uh, it's a little bit risky but I will try to print all test specimens at once using this method, uh, texture PI sheet and uh, glue stick. Printing is finished. Okay, let's check the bed adhesion. Okay, this is, well, <laughs> could be better. But it worked and I hope with the brim it will be better because definitely that will be very risky printing all test specimens at once. But that's what I will try with the first attempt. And this temperature tower looks really great. But I will compare all fours uh, when I print all test specimens here. So it starts with the brim and then it prints the objects and already after maybe 15 minutes on the first layer, the temperature inside is 40 degrees Celsius. Perfectly straight and I hope it will stay like that. After approximately one hour of printing, I can see small warping on one corner on this rectangle test object. Well, after two hours of printing, I can see that this will not be a successful print. Uh, I can see a warping on almost every object, so just a matter of time when will it fail. Uh, I will try to repeat this uh, maybe one by one, but now on the smooth PI sheet. And it finally happened, so the nozzle hit the corner of the warp object. And now after uh, three and a half millimeters of printing, I have to stop. But before I start printing one by one, I decided to give one more attempt, so I'm starting again uh, the printing all test specimens at once on smooth PI sheet, and I hope this will be a success or now. It is on 2mm layer height, and the previous printing uh, already had a very significant warping here, and this one is perfectly flat so far. And the only thing I changed, well, actually two things, the smooth PI sheet, and the second is that I slow down the printing to 80%. So it was worth risking, because all test objects will be printed at once. The last one stayed there in the corner, that's for the layer adhesion test. So the smooth PI sheet and 70% uh, uh, print speed helped. And in less than half hour I will have all test objects printed, and then I can analyze the temperature towers, and then start with the mechanical testing. And success! Everything is printed, and I can move to the next step. Oh, it's, it's even stick now, thanks to the glue stick. And now let's analyze the temperature towers. PLA, PTG, ASA, 
and PC blend. Here you can see the nice overhangs on any temperature with every filament, so PLA, PTG, ESC and PC blend. Here I try to show you the bridging properties, so PLA, PTG, ASC and PC blend. And this is the back side of the temperature tower, PLA, PTG, ESC and PC blend. I started with tensile pooling test. This test object is printed in horizontal position and the smallest cross section area is 4 by 4 mm. This is how they broke all on the smallest cross section area. Uh, only one footage I'm missing that's the breaking one of the ASA test objects, but I was watching it and it broke at 65 kilograms. And I will show you all the results uh, later at the end of this video. And it's time for the layer adhesion test. This test object is printed in vertical position and the smallest cross section area is 4 by 4 millimeters. I'm not sure what to tell you, so I just feel that PLA and PC blend is in one piece, uh, that constant layer adhesion I could feel. Uh, but I couldn't say that for the ASC and the PTG, and as you can see, even uh, one of the test specimens didn't even broke on correct position. And uh, I'm not sure what is this uh, inconstant uh, layer adhesion. I could even feel that uh, this one broke on the lower load. Next test is the shear stress and the diameter of this test object is 5 mm and as you can see it is double sided shear stress and I will just pull it until it doesn't break. And they all broke correctly on those two cross-section areas, this means in three pieces. Uh, only one ASA part is missing, but uh, everything else is here. This is three-point bending test. I'm starting with PLA. This is between supports is 50 mm. And I want to record the load at 2 mm deformation and the maximum load. I'm not surprised that PLA broke and PTG and PC blend just deform, but I thought the ASA will deform too and not break. Uh, interesting, but I will see how they perform on the impact test. The next is torque or twist test. The diameter of this test object is 6 mm. This side goes into the vise and the other side goes into the uh, digital torque meter. And I will rotate it until it doesn't break and also I want to record the load at uh, 90 degree deformation. One point nine was the peak. One. One point three was the peak. Zero point seven. And it's already broken. Zero point nine was the peak. One point four. Two point zero and it's still resist. 
2.3 was the peak. Well, I will show you the numbers again in the results, but it was interesting to see uh, how they act during this load and uh, how much twist they can make before they break. And I was a little bit disappointed with the ASA. Uh, interesting with the PC blend, how many rotations I could make until it didn't broke. The next is the IZ impact test, and I have here these uh, notch test objects. And this is half kilogram hammer, and it will swing to the other side as the zero position. And then I will place this test object here, they will uh, be broken, and the hammer will swing to the lower position. And in difference in height, I can calculate the potential energy, and actually the energy using for breaking this test object. Sorry about the mess a little bit because I'm building this all metal uh, test side testing machine and I'm in the middle of the work, but um, actually it doesn't affect this uh, measuring. Properly, with the PLA is the most brittle, uh, then uh, PTG, ASA, and properly the strongest in this test will be the PC blend. We will see, I already had some surprises with these materials. PLA, the zero position. PTG, ASA, PC blend. Here they are after the braking test, uh, but currently I don't know the difference. I have to analyze the footage and calculate the braking energy. So this is the scale and this is the zero position. And this is after breaking the PLA test object. And this is the PTG, ASA and PC blend. And if I measure everything from the zero position, I will get these values in millimeters. But in calculation, I have to convert them to meters, multiply with a G and the half kilogram hammer, and I will get the breaking energy in joules. And if I divide this with the cross section area of the test object, I will get the unit as a kilojoules in square meters. And now I want to measure the hardness with this short durometer and I will measure pepper and decorator layers and who knows, maybe in the future I will know how to use this information because currently I'm not sure is this useful or not. 18, 17.5, 76.5, 76.5. And it's time for the temperature test. I have these test objects with the M10 nut on them as a small load. And uh, first time I modified a little bit uh, my equipment because I placed here this steel plate because there is a big fan and I noticed that uh, approximately above the 60 degrees Celsius it starts with the blowing and very fast, very quickly uh, the objects deforms. So I hope with this I will get more constant uh, temperature inside this oven and I will follow the temperature with this cooking thermometer. Properly this will be the deformation order PLA, PTG, ESA and PC blend. Or maybe we will have surprises again. Now the small modification with this plate uh, means that uh, these results are not completely comparable with those from earlier videos, but they are completely comparable with these four filaments in this test. First three filament the formal predictive temperature, but the PC blend was very pleasant surprise. Okay, we we'll stop the experiment now because uh, it is 175 degrees Celsius. And very impressive. I can see some deformation on the PC blend, but uh, it still holds this uh, nut and, and it's quite hard. So if you need a temperature resistant filament, definitely PC blend is the best from these four. And it's time for the creep test. Creeping is a deformation of the material during the constant load over the time. And I have these surfaces, uh, distance between them is uh, 12 millimeters without load. PLA, PETG, ASA and PC blend. And I will place this 1.25 kilogram load on them and I will follow the deformation every day. Now, a uh, big difference between my earlier creep testing is that now I'm outside because I have guests uh, this week. But I check the temperature outside in next week will be uh, from 15 at the night up to 25 uh, during the day. 
This test will take approximately five or six days, I will see. And the last day, I will place it in the oven to 50 degrees Celsius for one hour. For more accurate measuring, I'm locking the position with this holder. Fourteen point seventy five, sixteen point seventy eight, fifteen point ninety eight, fifteen point ninety five. And don't worry, I will not show you every measuring. Uh, these are just uh, images which I took uh, every day. And uh, this is uh, what you can see now. This is day four and day five, and now the heating. This is the fifth day and I measure everything. And so far looks like the PLA has the smallest deformation, uh, but it didn't stop with the creeping completely. PTG, ASA and the PC blend, they are stopped with the creeping, almost no deformation at all. Uh, but now everything goes into 50 degrees Celsius in oven for one hour. How oh, exactly at this moment the pile failed. First time that uh, I have this experience, it just fell down. But I will left uh, three left of 50 degrees Celsius and uh, we will see what will happen. So one hour pass and as you can see the temperature inside is 50 degrees Celsius. This is the alarm temperature and I can stop the heating now. This was the sensor and now I can measure the, these test specimens and of course the angle on these. So I measured everything. And uh, yeah, this is the first time I go up to 50 degrees Celsius on this test and uh, the PLA became soft and it fell down. But look at this, it became only well, near the original shape. Now I can see the biggest deformation on PTG, that was not surprised. But interesting that I can see I measured uh, more deformation on the PC blend compared to the ASA. So for the creeping, the ASA is better from the PC blend. And now, as usual, removing of the load. And now, after approximately 10 minutes, uh, the PC blend and ASA have very similar shape. Uh, on PET, I can see a little bit more permanent deformation. And interesting, very similar is the PLA now, but previously it completely failed on this test. This is second type of the creep test uh, with the compression where I'm simulating uh, using it uh, plastic object with the screw. Two nuts goes into the vise and then I will use this torque wrench uh, to tie these bolts and then uh, next day I will see if I can uh, move them using the same torque and I will measure it with this angle meter. All four objects are ready and tomorrow I will see if I can move these bolts uh, using the same torque. And now let's see how much I can move these bolts using the same torque. Starting with PLA. And let's measure the creeping now after the heating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
everything is measured now so let's analyze the results and let's analyze the results this excel table you can download from my website and uh, let's talk about first uh, these uh, creep test tables so this is uh, with that uh, C test specimen directly measure those values but with the creeping we need uh, changes between two days and that's why I prepared this table this will be presented in a graph uh, don't forget uh, the PLA failed on 50 degrees Celsius I just entered here some number to get some presentation on graph the creep test with the screw is already in, uh, included with those changes so zero means no creeping and the rest is quite clear let's analyze better the graphs so these are those two creeps tests with the C test specimen and with the screw and I got very similar data uh, basically after second day uh, all three filaments uh, stopped with the creeping except with the PLA so uh, the PLA continuously uh, creeps uh, in this test and after 50 degrees Celsius in the oven uh, it had a significant a lot of creeping uh, on the screw test and of course in the oven it already failed and uh, then you can see this is the PTG and interesting that uh, PC blend and then ASA so ASA is better in this creeping compared to the PC blend on tensile test the PC blend was the strongest than PLA PTG and uh, ASA was quite disappointing in this test and similar is with the layer adhesion test so usually I consider that everything about 30 kilograms uh, in this test is acceptable but ASA had a quite weak uh, layer adhesion uh, PC blend I was surprised a little bit I thought it would be a little bit better but this is also acceptable in shear stress the PC blend was the strongest PLA and then uh, PTG and ASA very similar now usually on bending test and torque test I got very similar results and if I watch only the first 2 mm deformation and the 90 degree deformation uh, I have very similar except here so the PC blend was weaker but the maximal uh, bending load was a little bit better. Now the impact test. Uh, well uh, I was surprised with this order I thought the PC blend will be the strongest in this test uh, but basically this is also very acceptable but ASA performed very good uh, in this uh, ISO impact test temperature no surprises here or maybe I should say this is very pleasant surprise PC blend I thought it will start with deformation on approximately 100 maybe 110 degrees Celsius but uh, analyzing the footage I noticed that only approximately uh, at 150 degrees Celsius it starts with deformations so this was very pleasant surprise and the hardness well I measure it continuously but I still don't know is this useful or not if this would be metal then I would say that the hardest uh, material is also the wear resist but I'm not sure is that the case with the plastics anyway I will measure it and maybe once somebody will write me in the comment if I can use this information or not and now the conclusions and uh, first of all no the video cannot be shorter but uh, I'm not sure why are you complaining I mean you have the timestamps in down in the description so you can jump to any part of the video you want to see and actually there are no ads during the video I'm not sure if you noticed at all about the materials uh, yes the PLA is expected is very strong material but you saw uh, it cannot resist to high temperatures well actually it cannot resist to temperatures about 30 degrees Celsius if you put them under constant load that's the creeping but uh, above the 50 degrees Celsius they will deform under any kind of the small load for that you want to move to the PTG which is not so strong as the PLA but uh, it is less brittle and it can resist the temperature up to maybe 70 degrees Celsius but it is also very easily printable you don't need an enclosure and similar the next step is the ABS actually ASA in this case but they are very similar materials ASA is uh, UV resistant uh, and uh, well uh, it's quite good material it's actually light lighter compared to the uh, PLA and PTG lower density uh, but uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the weak layer adhesion I can even see some uh, layer separations almost on any kind of specimens or maybe on even on this uh, twist test uh, but yes it can resist uh, to temperatures maybe almost up to 90 degrees Celsius 
and actually the next step is the PC blend which uh, I was expecting a little bit more uh, from this mechanical properties uh, except it was very pleasant surprise to see that temperature test so uh, I tried to follow the deformation it started uh, at approximately 150 degrees Celsius so that's quite incredible but don't forget interesting that uh, it is not so creep resistant as ASA so if you want to build something which will be under constant load you still want to go with ABS or ASA and don't forget the PC brand is not so easily printable so it warps a lot on a specification table it says that uh, enclosure is recommended well I will say it is actually mandatory uh, slowing down uh, the printing may help also and definitely I suggest using a smooth uh, PI sheet with a glue stick about the gift I mentioned for my Patreon supporters, uh, I'm collecting all data from my previous videos because as I mentioned I'm always using these uh, standard test specimens and uh, the results are in most cases comparable with each other and I'm collecting them in one Excel table and uh, we create a post in a Patreon page and you can find the page where you can download this Excel table and in that case you can uh, choose, let's say, compare all ABS parts, uh, ABS filaments with each other to see which has maybe the best I don't know, tensile track or which is best for the impact strength or similar. But anyway, thanks to all donations I got because they make these kind of videos possible. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, the Prusament didn't want to send me some sample filaments, actually didn't even want to reply to my questions. Uh, so thank you all guys for the help. And uh, I hope uh, you will follow me to my next video too. Thank you for watching and happy printing.